The Haunting of Stevens Hall remains one of the most well-known ghost stories on WSU's campus, but many don't know the story behind a senseless act of violence that took away the precious life of a woman named Joyce LePage. If you asked any of the LePage siblings about their childhood, they would tell you their upbringing resembled a picture-perfect life. They spent most of their days working together on their family's farm in Pasco. They were close, but not just because they had no one else to play with but because they liked it that way. It was a very wonderful time growing up. Uh, we, we had chores to do each day um, before and after school, and, uh, but otherwise we had plenty of free time also. Because their parents relied on them to help out on the farm, they rarely took part in after school activities, but they still made time for fun. In between weeding their crops and changing sprinkler lines, they filled their free time by swimming in irrigation canals and farm ponds, biking to their friends' houses, and sleeping under the stars. They were best friends. Best friends with the bond so close that it couldn't be described, only felt. The four of us were fairly close in age, and, and uh, so the two sisters were kind of the leader of the family, and uh, they'd, they'd shove me around and, and uh, straighten me out when I needed it. Uh, but we had a good close-knit family, and, and it still is. Um, we just one less of us. The year of 1971 affected that bond after the LePage family learned they would never see one of their own again. Joyce, a 21-year-old student at WSU, stayed in Pullman the summer before her senior year to take classes and move closer to earning her degree. Those close to her admired her brilliance and more specifically, her prolific writing skills. Joyce was going to uh, go places in her life and I, I think she could have very well ended up being an educator at some level, high school, junior high, middle school, or possibly college level, because she was loved to write and was talented at it and, uh, and uh, would have shared that with, with the rest, rest of the world. Outside of the classroom, she had an adventurous side. She took skydiving lessons, and after one last ground practice before her first solo jump in Moscow, her friends dropped her off at her apartment late one evening in July. That weekend, Joyce had plans to go make that jump in Moscow and then back home to Pasco for the waterfally races. But she never showed up to either one. And her family instantly knew in their hearts that something was wrong. Very unlike her to not go ahead and, and uh, go to Moscow, do that jump, and, uh, and then come on back for the waterfallies, which her intention was. So she just disappeared, you know, from communication. And that was, that was very uh, odd. Nine months later, a boy hiking 10 miles south of Pullman in Wawawai Canyon found her body in a ravine, wrapped in a carpet. Authorities learned the carpet came from Stevens Hall after workers reported one missing the day after people last saw Joyce. She also, from time to time, likes to sneak into Stevens Hall uh, and spend the night there. There's a piano in there and she just likes kind of her own private time. After linking the piece of missing carpet to her death, Police determined someone most likely murdered her in Stevens Hall. If true, Joyce serves as the only murder victim on WSU's campus and provides the origin for this ghost story. But to Bruce, she's not just a ghost. Now, almost 50 years later, Bruce dedicates his life to his sister every day by continuing his search for the person responsible. I think the rest of the family has dealt well with it as it is. and. Uh... And I'm a realist. The, real, the, the likelihood of this individual being caught are pretty slim. But the slim doesn't stop me from looking. Bruce wants so badly to finish the story that he's offering a reward for $100,000. $60,000 for an arrest and an additional $40,000 for a conviction. If that would bring out someone that has information on this individual, um, if he's still alive, uh, that did the murder, money well spent. The lack of evidence, specifically DNA, as well as the passage of time, makes solving this case challenging for any investigator. Well, I think one of the big things that stands out about this case is the fact that it's over 40 years ago now. If you go back that far in time, uh, we don't have nearly the technologies that we have today. Uh, it's very easy um, to go missing back then. It's easy to go missing today, but it's very easy to go missing back then, essentially without a trace. 
I guess what I would say to this individual is that if, if uh, you're still alive and you're out there, um, I and the sheriff are gunning for you. The story that Bruce will tell won't be that of a ghost, but will be about the sister he describes as vivacious, outgoing, friendly, talented, and fun-loving. Just a sec. Uh, I guess um, my way of talking to Joyce is probably um, through the research that I do and just the re-examining her soul still out there and, and uh, that was part of the reason I built this um, this uh, uh, swing bench down on the river was uh, in honor of Joyce and for other people walking the bike path, they're tired, they can sit down there and enjoy the view of the river. Every time someone takes a moment out of their day to do so, they can breathe in a moment of happiness that Joyce so often gave to the world around her. Reporting from Pasco, Washington, Jasmine Duracci, Murrow News 8.